And uh, in this segment, we will be talking about uh, the World Cup. And uh, we will be talking about the experience gained from it, especially that uh, it's been since the 90s that Egypt uh, had participated in the World Cup. Yes, uh, uh, we were unlucky in some of the games. We still have uh, Egypt versus Saudi Arabia, but still we can benefit, benefit from experiences like experience and invest, benefit from uh, the international gathering and meeting with different teams to benefit from it and of course uh, we can use all the various aspects of uh, Egypt whether uh, investing in Egypt experiencing Egypt of course uh, Mohammed Salah as a role model and more we will be talking about the World Cup in general and Egypt's participation in it in particular and I'm happy to have with me sports analyst Mr. Wael Mahron to comment with us on uh, these important aspects of the World Cup 2018 Russia. Hello how are you? Welcome with us. Mr. Well, um, uh, of course, Egypt uh, played um, two days ago and uh, with uh, Russia, which is a very strong team. Uh, but uh, un unluckily, the, uh, unfortunately, the, the outcome was very uh, disappointing for the Egyptian side. So what's your comment on, on this match and, and what happened uh, that uh, our team lost? 3-2-1 uh, for Russia. Well, let's start by, uh, by, by understanding more the meaning of being there in the World Cup, by being there in, uh, in uh, the best or the biggest uh, competition uh, worldwide uh, for football, one of the most uh, viewed and watched events uh, uh, in the whole year. Uh, the World Cup is a festival where everyone goes to um, uh, to be there with, with the best teams in the world, the best football in the world, and uh, and to uh, to raise the Egyptian flag over there and uh, be among teams like uh, Uruguay, uh, who has won the World Cup twice before, like uh, Argentina, like Brazil, like uh, Germany, and so on. This is a very uh, huge honor, and we should uh, be happy and keep celebrating uh, this event, uh, not remember only the defeats of Uruguay and Russia or that. We should remember that we are there uh, and this is what's more important uh, than winning or losing at the beginning, of course. Uh, if we talk more about uh, the technical part and uh, the results of the two matches, Uruguay and Russia, especially Russia, as you mentioned, um, we need to know more about our opponents. Uh, our opponents, uh, like Uruguay, they have the best strikers in the world. Cavani and uh, Luis Suarez, they are the best in the world right now. And uh, they're a very organized team. They're always there, at least in the quarterfinals most of the time. Um, they qualify uh, from uh, Latin America with Brazil, Argentina. Very, very strong teams, uh, much stronger than, than us, of course. And our competitors like Congo, like Uganda, like uh, any of the teams we played, even Ghana was an important uh, pivot in African football is not the same anymore. So, so we are st facing strong teams. Uh, Russia is the host team. They are uh, a European team. They are very rapid, very fast, uh, um, amazing uh, physical fitness. They played an amazing run in the in the before the World Cup against Argentina. They played against Spain, against Brazil against the top teams in the world. They lost, yes, and they went and draw most of their matches, but they learned a lot from these teams and from these matches. They learned to be more strict, uh, more um, committed to the plan of the coach, uh, not to lose focus uh, all through the match, winning or losing, uh, to keep always an eye on the best uh, players like Mohamed Salah, for example, and, uh, and our main players on the sides. So. They were, uh, I think, more committed to the plan and uh, more disciplined on the field the whole 90, uh, 90 minutes. Uh, they were very aggressive, they were faster than us, they were higher physical fitness. And this was very obvious. We, we kept on running, we did a great effort in the match, but even that effort wasn't enough to match their fitness and their speed and their commitment. So, so I think that was the result, which is not uh, anything a surprise. This is football and uh, they are in a higher rank ranking, uh, at least... Um, uh, effectively uh, uh, as a football team and uh, we're happy with our team I think uh, that I'm honored to say that we are there in the World Cup and uh, we're, we're happy with our uh, players who didn't uh, save any effort uh, all through the two matches right uh, till now 
uh, uh, to win or to do their best. But this is what they can do right now. So, so we're okay with that, and we hope for the best in the upcoming match against Saudi Arabia. Now, when we look at the festivities itself by Egyptians who uh, decided to go and visit and uh, attend the matches and in every area uh, where the matches are taking place there is an Egyptian corner, there are folkloric shows. How, how do you feel about that and uh, the message it's sending to all the, those who are attending uh, the World Cup from all over the world? Well, of course, it's amazing, and it wouldn't have happened if we didn't qualify. So, so, mm -hmm. so step one is these players and this that coach and this technical team qualified to be there. So they gave us an opportunity to have these festive events and uh, to have everyone all over the place. And uh, this uh, uh, World Cup for the first time is happening uh, not only uh, in one single city. So before the group was playing in a single city, if you qualify, you can mo move on from that city to another one or you play in your city. If you don't qualify, you go home and that's all. This time, uh, each match is played in a separate city. This is, uh, of course, uh, an opportunity for Egyptians and for Team Egypt to be there in different places uh, in Russia and to uh, show our culture and our team and our supporters in different areas of Russia. Of course, it's harder for the fans because you have to move or keep moving or you select only one city and you go to watch only one match. Uh, it's more costly, a lot of a lot more costly. Uh, you mm. you pay a lot of money, so uh, to move on, f even by train from one city to another. But mm. uh, the positive side is that you're there in different places. You're there with the Saudi fans. You're there with the Uruguay fans. You're there with the Russian fans in different mm. cities. People watch you in every single match mm. against their team. Uh, uh, so. The viewer, the viewers are a lot more, and uh, the the viewership is uh, is bigger and wider. The broadband is wider, so of course it's important and it's um, a great opportunity. And we hope to see the impact of this opportunity uh, in the upcoming uh, few months uh, in Egypt. Uh, the 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 tourism is very high till the end of the year, so we hope that this uh, would have a positive impact on our uh, uh, homeland here in Egypt and. Uh, the, the places where tourism is uh, high, like Sharm el Sheikh and Gardan, and so on. What is uh, missing uh, the Egyptian team uh, in order to be qualified to play with international and uh, strong teams like uh, Russia, Spain, uh, Argentina, and, and these famous uh, teams? What is missing? So this is a very important question. and I think everyone watching the team uh, in the first two matches was saying the same question. What do we have missing? We have good players and uh, we have... Uh, a uh, coach who is taking a lot of money per month and so on. And with preparations, good preparations against Belgium, against uh, Greece, against Kuwait, uh, against uh, uh, Portugal, we played good, good matches. So what's missing is the, the, the system is totally different. We have a league in which most of the, the competition, we know the winner before we, before we start. Sometimes we ha they, they have competition, uh, um, some matches, but they lose one competition, but it's always the same winner. So the league is, is, one, is a one-side game. So this is the Egyptian league, the football league. We have players who have started playing abroad, but only one player is the main starting figure with Mohamed Salah. Ramadan Subhi, most of the matches, doesn't play. Uh, Terzgi is playing, yes, in Turkey, in a good uh, competition, at least better than the, 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 Turkey, the Egyptian league. But Turkish league is still one of the weakest in Europe, so it's not playing somewhere fancy. Uh, Ahmed Hagazi is playing in a team that went to, to down in the Premier League. They were the last West Bromwich, the last team in the Premier League. So, so we need more players to play abroad to play. Like Mohamed Salah, he played in Basel, Switzerland. Not in the uh, Premier League, not in Italy, not anywhere uh, fancy. He played in Switzerland at first and then he started moving on. So we need more players to play like Mohamed Salah to travel cheap from here for uh, for lower uh, cost uh, uh, b at the beginning, at the start, to travel when they're young, like Ramadan Subhi, uh, uh, and so on. We, ha we need more players. We need, uh, we need uh, uh, more system that produces a strong league. Uh, so we have competition between four or five or six teams to have a stronger Egyptian league and have stronger players. If you look b uh, back ago at the squad, which didn't qualify actually before, we had uh, Trika, we had Barakot, we had uh, Amr Zaki. We had five strikers. One of them was Mido, uh, uh, Amr Zaki, Ahmed Mitaib, uh, 
uh, Hussam Hassan. We have strike right now. We don't have a skipped one striker, Marwan Mohsen only. This the only one. Mm -hmm. So so the system needs more players. They need uh, to have better competition between the teams, between the, between the, between the players themselves, and to have uh, uh, more players playing abroad. This will impact us on the level of the national team. We have a team that can play against Spain, that can play against uh, Russia, Uruguay, Brazil even, and can beat them or even just play good and play better. Uh, we also need a coach who is um, a, a, a bit oriented uh, uh, towards beautiful football, not only just defense and um, um, liking that we are went, going for a draw and defending and throwing the ball to our best player and just scoring. But and that, definitely yeah. uh, the team has benefited. First of all, we have now the, our goalkeeper. He got the, the title uh, man of the match yes. uh, uh, during uh, the Uruguay uh, games. We yeah. had uh, uh, now each of the players will be having uh, uh, um, in his record that he has participated in an international uh, uh, in the Mondial, so that will give him uh, uh, participation in international events. So there are benefits as well uh, from it and, and the experience itself. Uh, don't you think so? Definitely. Of course, uh, uh, the World Cup is a huge show. Everyone is watching, everyone around the world, if not in the fans area uh, behind television. So, so this is an important event that everyone is watching. Uh, uh, the, the best case scenario is if you play really good, mm -hmm. so these players can get contracts and can uh, travel and uh, uh, can play abroad uh, this way or, uh, or that uh, and have um, uh, like the open market for the Asian players. So this is uh, the real benefit. Of course, being there is important, but we need the players to be more uh, um, coherent on the match and to, to show better football so that they can be watched and they can be uh, taken or signed for contracts. And we need the Egyptian uh, teams to be more realistic and not to place uh, uh, high value on players like, like Ahmed Fathi, for example, who, who, who scored against us in the match. He did a really a great game uh, uh, in, against Russia and against Uruguay. But uh, 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 the team as a whole, we didn't play that good football to say that uh, yeah, that player excelled or that player did really yeah. well. It's so this worth, is important. Yeah, it's just worth mentioning that we've just screened part of uh, the campaign of experience uh, and invest in Egypt. It was on screen uh, with images of uh, Minister of Investment and International Cooperation, Dr. Sal Sahar Nasr, and of course uh, the head of uh, the FIFA. And we've just screened that, and that would lead us to the idea of the initiative of uh, experience and invest in Egypt. The importance of it. We will have. Better Banners of Egypt and uh, the slogans like this is Egypt's experience and uh, ex uh, invest in 64 matches ex uh, in 64 matches uh, and we'll be having it also on banners and billboards throughout the different countries participating in FIFA. How do you see that? Well, in my opinion, uh, uh, the, the people are there in uh, Russia uh, to celebrate, mm -hmm. to watch football. Uh, to to know more about cultures of different uh, countries and to to see the fans as we do we, we watch the the Russian fans we want the Uruguay fans we watch uh, uh, how the Japanese fans clean the stadium after they left uh, their match and uh, we watch different cultures and different fans and the different uh, views of course if you are there you can watch the 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 booths of different countries and different cities. I'm not sure about investment, but what I'm sure of that tourism is very important and uh, tourism will have a huge impact uh, uh, on the on the market over there, and that we will see that impact here in Egypt uh, later and after the World Cup uh, uh, from uh, different uh, countries all over the world who watched the Egyptian fans, they watched uh, the booth that you mentioned uh, of the initiative of invest in Egypt and uh, and come and see Egypt, and we hope that this will have a huge benefit on the economy of Egypt and uh, and the tourism scene here inshallah after any uh, mistake that uh, we we make we should learn what am what are the mistakes that we should learn from this uh, world cup we've called because we've, been, we've waited so many uh, so long to in order to participate in this important event and when we had the chance to to be in it we lost it that easy so what are the mistakes that we should learn yeah well I, I won't call uh, losing a match losing the the, the World Cup we uh, we qualified and this was most important but we, know, we need to know 
who are we and where we are. We didn't qualify for 28 years, so when you qualify for the first time from a weak group against weak teams like Congo, who we beat in the last minute with a, with a penalty, and uh, when you play against Kuwait, you don't score except at the last minute in a match, you're losing all, the, all of the match. When you play against uh, uh, Portugal, you lost, we did really not bad. We lost against Belgium 3-0. So our team is not that uh, ripe yet. We're not, we don't have that maturity, the World Cup maturity. We didn't play in huge uh, championships except the last time was the African uh, Cup of Nations. We took uh, second place, yes, but we didn't play. We don't have the culture of playing with this team, with this group of players in huge events like the World Cup. So we need to have that culture. We need to have uh, coach and players who are not scared, who are not worried, who have self-confidence, like Mohamed Salah. He goes for a match, he goes for to win. He doesn't go to uh, to, win, to go for a draw or to lose the match or uh, to just uh, play uh, he plays to win. We need to have more players like Mohamed Salah. And we have those players. Kahraba is a very good player. Uh, Rabban Subhi is an amazing player, an immense talent. He needs to, to play more matches. As I said, we need more players playing abroad. This is the, the main target that we should have. And we, we need to have a strong league with fans uh, attending. So this will mean that the healthy environment of football will be back again. This will have a, a better uh, team, a better national team. Uh, it's a good opportunity that there will be 48 players in the World Cup, not 32. Uh, after the 2022 uh, World Cup in the, in the 2026, so this is a bigger opportunity for us to qualify again, inshallah, next time and the time after, and to have a, a, a more mature national team uh, with better players, better experienced players, better um, players to, to pick of. Not only we have one Mohamed Salah, we don't have a second replacement, we have to have a replacement. We have more Ahmad Hagazi, more Shinnawi, more uh, players on the attack, not only Marwan Mohsen. When we do that, inshallah, we'll play better and we'll win uh, match it in the World Cup. Well, uh, uh, Wael Mahran, a uh, sports analyst, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very, very much for having me and uh, congratulations for, uh, for Egypt for being there and we, inshallah for more and better uh, performance and better results, inshallah. Inshallah, thank now, you. Uh, Gina, let's enjoy together uh, a song by Mustafa Amar. It's dedicated for uh, Nile TV and it's called Teqdar Teksab or You Can Win and we will be enjoying it right now.